boy Big Baby Miller here. Check out Jake Calderon Boxing. Knock out to Big Baby. Let's get it. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Jay Calderon, Stan Clean Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's boxing talk. It's the much anticipated heavyweight showdown this weekend, Saturday, December 1st, on Showtime Pay Per View. It's a very big card on hand, and it's going to be the main event of the evening WBC heavyweight champion Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder taking on lineal heavyweight champ Tyson Fury. This is a matchup that's taking place in Los Angeles, California at the Staples Center where there's going to be perhaps about 10,000 fans in attendance for this fight when it's all said and done. Not a big crowd on hand, but it's a big showdown on paper. This is a matchup between two heavyweight giants, Tyson Fury, 6'9", about 250, 260 pounds. Very good shape right now. You got to give this man a lot of respect and a lot of credit because he has been out of the ring almost three years and he battled mental health issues, drug addiction, and alcohol abuse. And this guy has turned his life around. He's back in the ring. He's had two fights already this year and he's gotten into very good shape and he's ready to take on the heavyweight champion of the world, which is WBC champ. Deontay Wilder, the most dangerous and deadliest puncher in the heavyweight division. Now, Wilder, the American fighter, is looking to make a very big statement in this fight. He's looking to beat the man that beat the man because we know that Tyson Fury went over to Germany and defeated and dethroned Vladimir Glitchko, who reigned for about 10 years as the heavyweight champion. And it was a performance that wasn't so great, but it was a victory win and an upset to etch himself into the history books to hold most of the heavyweight titles. The only title that he did not hold was the WBC title, which he's fighting for this weekend. And Tyson Fury is a very huge underdog in this fight. We know that he has very good boxing skills. This man has quick hands, he has a good jab, and he has the ability to box Deontay Wilder, who's not that great of a boxer. He's a bit of a clumsy fighter with his footwork, but Wilder can also use his jab. He has a very long reach with a very good solid jab, and he has one of the best teachers in the game in Mark Breland, and he was an excellent amateur that has been working with Deontay Wilder for quite some time, and we've seen flashes of boxing skills from Deontay Wilder, especially in that first Birmingham Stavern fight where he dominated Stavern through 12 rounds and showed that boxing ability. So I believe Deontay Wilder could box with Tyson Fury throughout this fight. It's going to be an ugly fight. I don't think this is going to be a very entertaining fight. Wilder's going to be the pressure fighter that's going to go in there looking for the knockout. And Tyson Fury, he has some elusiveness. He has some good head movement. And he knows how to use his footwork very well. I believe that he's going to tie up Deontay Wilder a lot in this fight. It's going to be a lot of holding and grabbing by Tyson Fury. And that's what's not going to make this fight so exciting. Because Fury doesn't want to get hit with those big bombs. It's going to have to be perfect timing on Deontay Wilder. Wilder to be able to land that money shot, that big right hand to really put Fury down because Fury has a suspect chin. He doesn't have the greatest chin. He's been down before in the canvas and his punching power is not enough to stop a guy like Deontay Wilder because Wilder has a proven chin. He's been in there with hard punches like Luis Ortiz where he got rocked and he was in bad shape, but he was able to survive. Deontay Wilder has a much better chin than Tyson Fury, and I believe that Deontay Wilder will be successful in this fight. It might go 12 rounds. I won't be surprised if it does go 12 because Tyson Fury is going to be on survival mode from the first round to the last round, and he will lose a most likely a unanimous decision against Deontay Wilder, but I'm looking like everybody else is looking for the knockout. We're looking for Deontay Wilder to land that big right hand and put Tyson Fury out code in this fight and really make an impressive knockout performance, a highlight reel knockout, so he could put his stamp as one of the best heavyweights in the heavyweight division right now. Because this man right here is on a mission to prove that he is the number one heavyweight in the world. And the only way to do that is to face Anthony Joshua, who I believe is the number one heavyweight in the world, who has three of the world title belts. He is the man in the division. He is the money man, the A side of this, and he is looking to make a date with Deontay Wilder in April of 2019 in Wimbledon Stadium in London, England. And that's a big stadium where it could fit more than 90,000 fans in attendance, and it's a huge fight. Promoter Eddie Hearn has been instructed 
to make this fight the very next fight for Anthony Joshua because they're tired of the backlash. They're tired of hearing the fans say that they want to see this fight. And this is the super fight in the heavyweight division, and it hasn't been done. There's been failed attempts on both ends, not just one side of the story. You know, Eddie Hearn and them, they try to get the advantages on their side, and it hasn't worked out for them. And then Deontay Wilder and his team have not really wanted to make this fight under certain circumstances, but they're willing to come together to really negotiate and make a fair deal so that they could be able to step into the ring and finally settle the score of who's the best heavyweight in the world for the undisputed crown, for all the title belts. This is what we're waiting for. We're waiting for our version of Evander Holyville versus Lennox Lewis, America versus Great Britain, in 2019 and we can't wait for this fight to take place so i'm looking for deontay wilder victorious either by 12th round unanimous decision or perhaps by knockout in spectacular fashion i believe it's going to happen in the later rounds we have to just wait and see how it's going to play out it's a 75 dollars pay-per-view i don't really think this pay-per-view is going to do well at all i say it's going to do no more than 300,000 pay-per-view buys. That's how bad I feel that this fight is gonna sell because I really don't see it doing not even a half a million pay-per-view buys and definitely not reaching the one million mark. But I see Deontay Wilder becoming victorious in this fight. It's gonna be a very big show, but I see Tyson Fury really not doing much in this fight and not making it entertaining with a lot of holding and a lot of grabbing before the end is done. But also on hand, Showtime is going to give you a treat right before the pay-per-view starts. I think it starts around 6.30 or 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a live broadcast on Showtime and also on Showtime's Facebook page and also on Showtime's YouTube channel. And you're going to get to watch WBC light heavyweight champion Adonis Superman Stevenson make his mandatory challenge against Ukrainian bronze medalist Olazanda Gavotik. This is a fight matchup where it's going to perhaps be the best fight of the evening. It's a very good matchup between a young, hungry fighter and Gavotik. Gavotik is a solid fighter in the 175-pound weight division, and he's looking to make a huge statement in here and pronounce himself as the leader of the 175-pound weight division because he is a dangerous, hard-hitting puncher with very good technical skills. He can use his jab. He can go to the body with a vicious left hook, and he has a beautiful left hook, and he sets up the right hand straight over the top. That's going to be a very big weapon against a southpaw like Adonis Stevenson. Stevenson has still quick hands, but this guy is in the twilight era of his career, in his 40s already, and he's on the downside right now. We saw in his last performance, it was the first real stiff competition that he has had in a very long time when he took on Badu Jack, and that fight ended in a draw. It was a very close fight. Badu Jack gave him hell in that fight, and he barely won that fight against Badu Jack. So this fight right here is gonna prove where he's at right now in his career. Is this the end? of Adonis Superman Stevenson. Will this be the end of his long reign as light heavyweight champion? A lot of people have criticized this man for not taking on the top competition, but after the Purdue Jack fight, and now this fight right here, he could solidify himself still as the number one guy at 175 pounds. We have three other champions that are in the weight division with guys like WBA champ Dimitri Bivo, who just defended his title against Jean Pascal in a dominant performance where he didn't look all that spectacular because he hasn't had a knockout performance in quite some time, but he's one of the most skillful fighters in the light heavyweight division. And then you also have Ileda Alvarez with his impressive knockout victory over Sergey Kovalev. This guy right now holds the WBO title and he has a rematch coming up in February of 2019 with Sergey Kovalev. And that should be a very good fight right there. And then you have the IBF champion, which is Russian destroyer, Arthur Bedevin. This guy right here is one of the most dangerous punchers in the division, and he is a guy that looks to make an impressive statement in 2019 and try to really take over the division because I believe that he is one of the front runners, along with guys like Gavotik, that are going to be the ones to really lead the pack in this division right here. Demetrius Bivo, a lot of people are high on him, but I haven't been that 100% impressed with him in his last three performances. He has very good skills, and he is perhaps the most skillful out of all of them. 
But Gavotic is a guy that's very dangerous for Adana Stevenson. He's going to be fighting in his backyard of Canada, and it's going to be a very good fight. I think it's going to be an explosive matchup where there should be some knockdowns. Adana Stevenson could never count them out because he has tremendous knockout power from that left hand stance. That straight left hand could land his money punch, and he could put Gavotic down because we still haven't seen the chin of Gavotic and see how good it is against this type of punching power. And it's a step up for him because he's only had about, I believe, 15 professional fights and Adonis Stevenson has a lot of experience. He has that quickness. He has the boxing skills where he sets up his jab very nicely. He goes to the body and head with his combination punches. He has a very good sneaky uppercut on the inside, and I believe that he's going to be able to do some of those things against Gavotic, but Gavotic, if he's able to land that big left hook and hurt Adonis Stevenson with that straight right hand down the pipe, then it could be a very short night for Adonis Stevenson and I think that Adama Stevenson could possibly get knocked out in this fight. I think I'm going to be leaning towards the upset for Gavotic to win by knockout against Adana Stevenson. But I would like to see Adana Stevenson win. I've been a fan of his since day one. A lot of people criticize this man a lot for ducking, you know, Sergey Kovalev and everything. But I believe it's just because of the politics of boxing that these fights haven't materialized for Adonis Stevenson, but this is a great matchup right here to prove that he is the best light heavyweight in the world because he is the lineal champion and the WBC champ of this division. And this fight right here, he needs an impressive victory to mark his stamp as the king of the division. But I see upset victory in the making for Alexander Gavoktik by knockout. But that's my final take on the upcoming fights this weekend. Tune in to Showtime and also tune in to that Showtime pay-per-view. Starts off at 9 p.m. with a great card. You got British heavyweight Joe Joyce on the undercard. You have unified junior middleweight champion Jared Swift Hurd making his return on that card. And you have heavyweight Cuban knockout puncher Luis King Kong Ortiz also featured on that card right there. And the main event, Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in to this YouTube channel right here, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. Please hit that little red subscribe button. Put your email information in so you get all my notifications once I drop a new video. Also, hit that bell icon. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Drop a comment. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. And join the Facebook boxing group page. All under the same name, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. I'm J. Calderon. Stand clear entertainment. Thanks for your support, keep watching, and please subscribe.